What's up, you guys? Josh Tonga here. Today, I want to talk about how to really pray the Neville Goddard way and the true meaning of repentance. Because once you become more aware of the depth of your own being, then by the end of this, you'll finally know the secret to having your prayers answered. And you can learn more about this from Neville's work called Repentance, a Gift from God. You see, the problem is that a lot of people tend to think of prayer, at least in some cases, as a form of begging. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe there were times when you were in a tough situation and were like, God, please help me. You know, just constantly crying out for God or the universe to do something, right? And I'll be honest, I've been there. And if you grew up in a religious home or read the Bible before, you probably heard the word repentance and it's usually understood as something like regret or to be remorseful. But here's the thing. Neville wants you to realize that the common understanding of prayer and repentance is way off, dude, which is why there are many out there who pray and pray and pray, but then nothing stinking happens. But before I get into that, let me share a couple of things. You see, Neville says that the whole of life is just appeasement of hunger, and that the states of consciousness from which we think and view the world are purely a means of satisfying that hunger. Remember, there are only states of consciousness pushed out, he says, everything in this world and that your state of consciousness is always being externalized. So if you know how to move from a state that you don't like to a state that you would like to externalize, then boom, that's it. That's the secret. So what's real prayer and repentance then? Ready? It's not begging, okay? He even says that it's not petition. Oh, that's a biggie. Rather, prayer is thanksgiving. It's praise. And that prayer and repentance are almost synonymous terms. You see, contrary to popular belief, instead of repentance meaning regret or to be remorseful, it's this. Repentance is simply a radical change of attitude. Repentance is simply a radical change of attitude. Metanoia. So when you radically change your attitude towards life, guess what? You change your state of consciousness. You'll view and see the world from that change of attitude. And since all states of consciousness are being externalized in the world, then that state that you moved into will externalize itself in your world in a way that you don't know how. Because look, Neville says that repentance is a person's responsibility, but it's also a gift of God. What's your responsibility? Well, if you want to change your world, then ask yourself, what would I see if it were changed? How would I see the world if my world was exactly the way I want it to be? Then in your mind's eye, you see it. You see it. Remember, it's all contained within your imagination. You create and enact a scene which would imply the fulfillment of your dream. You live as though it's true, that it's real, in your mind's eye. And then, he says, you turn it over completely in thanksgiving to your father. Now, who's the father he's referring to? Ready? According to Neville, it's you. It's you, believe it or not. It's your essential being but it transcends your reasoning mind. You see, you don't know how on this level, how what you're quote unquote praying for can be done, right? You have no freaking clue how it's gonna work out, but it's all good though, don't sweat it, because you do know this, that if you have faith in him, in your father, who is your own self, by the way, it will be done in your world. Why? Neville says you can't deny that the depth of your own being is seeing your assumption and hearing what you're doing, what you're inwardly saying, which is why you can confidently say, Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Now, here's the main question we all want to know. Does this really work? Well, Neville talks about the time when he was completely shut out in certain areas. In his words, imprisoned, as it were. Not in the federal prisons, but a state of imprisonment, where he was on an island that he enjoyed for almost five months, but he had a commitment in America that he had to get to in Milwaukee, the first week of May. But then he was told that there was no possibility of return until the very earliest September. And he seemed screwed because there weren't any ships taking passengers. And the list ran into thousands waiting all through the Indies from Trinidad all the way up. And he was on the island of Barbados. So what did Neville do? Check this out. He simply sat in a chair in his hotel room. And he assumed that he was on a little tender moving against the boat. And he mentions those were the days before they had a deep water harbor. But anyway, he says that at the time, you take a small boat out to the ship, waiting maybe half a mile to sea, and then you'd walk up the gangplank. So here's what he did. He simply stepped up on the gangplank and walked up that gangplank, listen, in his 
mind's eye. And if his mind wandered, which he admits it did, he brought it right back to that very first step and walked up again, step after step. And when he got to the top, he turned around and put his imaginary hands on the rail and he could smell the salt of the sea in the air. And then he looked back with nostalgia. Notice the feeling. He looked back with nostalgia at the little island of Barbados with mixed emotion where he's happy because he's sailing for America, but he's sad because he's leaving his family behind. And then in that mood, remember he's sitting on a chair imagining all this. He knocked out and went to sleep. He took a little nap in that state of consciousness. Check this out. The next day, he was called by the same company who said there was no possibility of him getting out of there before the very earliest September. And they told him that there was a cancellation that day in America. And so they offered it to him despite the list of over a thousand people waiting. Boom. His prayer was answered. He wasn't concerned of why the person canceled the passage. He just did what he was called upon to do, which was what? To repent and have a radical change of attitude. And don't forget, he says that the second part of repentance is what? It's a gift from God where somehow, some way, folks, God has the power and the way of externalizing your desire. Because think about it. What caused the person to cancel? And he eventually found out that the woman who canceled was afraid to make the trip, but no explanation was given, but it all worked out somehow. See, Neville says that the art of prayer is a subjective appropriation of the objective hope. He calls it the attempted communion with God where you don't need the mediation of any priest or rabbi or any heavenly being, he says. Because you're communing with, listen closely, yourself. You get that? You're communing with yourself. Once again, the depth of your own being is God the Father. You and God the Father are one. Let that sink in. Now, where would you go to find God, Neville asks? In a church? In a synagogue? In a so-called holy place? Nah, dude, wherever you are, that's where God is. God's not outside of you, folks. Shoot, God's not even near you. For goodness sake, because since you and God are one, to say that God's near you isn't near enough, he says, because nearness implies what? Separation. And you can't be separate. Why? Because you're one. And as I talked about in my last video, we live in a world where we're moving through different states of consciousness, right? And so if you're in a state that you don't like, well, then Neville says, don't remain in it and wallow. Just get out of it. Don't condemn anyone for it. Don't judge anyone, just get out of it. How? By asking yourself, what would it be like if? And then you imagine. You imagine what would it be like if it were true that you're now the person you want to be. And then you dare to assume that you're it. Don't dwell in the past, you guys. You're wasting your stinking time. He mentions a story about this little old lady who kept on confessing time and time again to a priest because of an affair she had when she was a young girl. And the priest said to her, you know, my dear, you've told me that over and over again. And she said, yes, but I love to talk about it. Look, if you know someone who screwed up, don't condemn them. Distinguish between the state and the person because they're not the same thing. And help take them out of that state. How? By you asking them, what would you like? And then in your mind's eye, you represent them to yourself as a person they want to be. An example Neville gives was when his friend went to San Francisco and he taught his friend the law and as much as he could tell him of the promise. Anyway, one day his friend was walking around in the street with his little dog, a little fox terrier, and a man came up to him, wobbling a bit, asking his friend for money. And the stranger said he was unemployed and wanted a little handout. And it was obvious that he had quite a bit to drink, but Neville's friend didn't judge that aspect at all. In fact, he didn't even care if he had all the liquor in the world. But his friend wanted to apply this principle. So he said to the stranger, I don't have any money to give you, but what I have, I'll give you. And the guy couldn't understand what the heck he was talking about. And so he thanked him and walked away. But Neville's friend didn't make one step beyond that point before he did what was his responsibility. And he represented that stranger to himself as gainfully employed and in no need of help from anyone, just gainfully employed. And then he went his way with his little dog. Peep this, a week later, Neville's friend was walking down the street and the same man came up to him and said, I don't imagine that you remember me. But Neville's friend said, oh yes, I do. And the guy said, I want to thank you for not giving me help when I asked you a week ago 
because had you given me help, I would be asking you for help tonight too. But I got so mad with myself because you turned me down and I was in that position to ask for help. I went out the very next day and got myself a marvelous job. And I'm on the job now. Boom. All right, real talk. Now, some of you are in a state that you really don't like where you end up doing things you know deep down you don't want to do. Certain habits or patterns you struggle with, whether it be in regards to money, your health, relationships, or whatever. And you've been praying and praying and praying, but for some reason, you still feel stuck. Neville says that you can't get rid of those things by remaining in those states, you guys, because you're just going to end up doing them again. You can keep telling yourself that you're not going to do such and such, but then 24 hours later, the impulse is still there and you do it again. You know what I'm saying? And most likely end up feeling worse too. So it's this endless cycle as long as you remain in the same state, folks. Because think about it, to try to change your circumstances before you change your state of consciousness, Neville says, it's a struggle against the very nature of things. You can't do it. And begging a God outside of you ain't going to do any good either. So what can you do? You can do this. You go within and you commune with your own heart. You go within and you commune with your own heart. What would the world be like if it were true that I'm already the person I want to be? And then you see it. You see it in your imagination. What would it feel like? You change your attitude towards the world and let the world see you as a changed person. Stop beating yourself up and dwelling in the past. You know what I'm saying? Screw that, dude. Neville says, forget it. Know exactly what you want in this world and dare to assume that you are it. And then yield and surrender completely to the depth of your own being, to your father. And watch what happens. Watch what happens. This is a secret of prayer, you guys. You don't got to devise the means. You don't got to worry about the how. Just have faith knowing that God will project for you that which you desire in this world and it will be externalized because you get what you believe yeah all righty guys just a heads up i'm working on something right now for you that'll really help build this community we got going on here where we'll be able to connect even more and i'll be releasing that in the near future so be on the lookout for that and yo if you enjoyed this please do me a favor like and share this or if you're listening via podcast i'd really appreciate a review it gets more people to discover my work and of course help spread this message and I'd love to hear your experiences or questions in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button and the bell right next to it to be notified of my next video. I pump these out every single week so you don't want to miss them. And don't forget to register for my free online training where I dive deeper into how you can start manifesting the life you really want right now. So check it out. The link's in the description. Like I always say, more's coming. Till next time, I'm out. Peace. Mm -hmm.